Hello and welcome to Jo Beth Sexton's Crafty Cauldron. I am Jo Beth Sexton and I am going to show you a little fun project. It's probably not a new idea, but I didn't get it from anywhere. I This came about, I didn't see any like videos or anything like that. This came about because I was trying to do one thing and I ended up discovering myself doing something else. Not entirely different, but close. Anyway. What we're going to be doing today is what I like to call doily stamping. And I need paper. That's one thing I forgot. Ah! Anyway, so here we are. Paper. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, you can use all kinds of different stuff for this. Um, you can use to make the color. I have watercolor, uh, a watercolor in a tube, watercolor pigment. I have Tombow dual brush pens. I have Dilusions ink spray and a, let's see, I haven't opened this yet. I just did an unboxing. And, of course, I'm not totally prepared, so let me see if I can get a thingy under here. And There we go. That ought to do it. So, these, what I did was, um, a while back, I ordered some of these doilies because they were super neat and they were at a really good price. The lady who was selling them, is her name is Donna Smith, I believe. I will put a link under the video and um, you guys can see that. Um, I highly recommend covering your workspace. I'm messy. Um, also using rubber gloves because, or some kind of vinyl gloves. These are vinyl. Um, they're hairdresser gloves. Um, I figured they'd be fine. Now you watch. With all these precautions that I've taken, I'm I'm probably going to make a colossal mess. But hey, I like messy art. That's what I always say. So what I was trying to do is I had these these doilies, and these are really awesome doilies. Donna makes really great doilies, and I know she has she either makes them or she has um, vintage ones that she sells, and she sells them like in lots and in kits where you can, you know, glue them together, sew them together and make little flowers and things like that with flat back pearls with, for your journals or um, mixed media art or whatever you have. But um, what I wanted to do was I bought all these because I wanted to dye them because I don't necessarily always want to use a light colored doily. So what I did was I started just like throwing down some pigments on a paper plate. Now, um, generally, you know, you can use any anything, any surface you want, but generally, you know, you got you've got all this stuff. You, know, you can put your coloring stuff on. I recommend putting down a lot of ink and then um, spraying it so it doesn't dry out. And what I'm doing is but what I was doing was I was taking the doilies and I was just like letting them soak up. And you may have to put more uh, color down. The, the, these pens, they work really well. I mean, they're full of pigment. The Tombows are an excellent, excellent brand. And um, they have, you know, lots of different colors and, and all of that. Um, I highly recommend them. So you've got your doily and it's it's moist, right? So you've got that that all. See, look how pretty that is. That is just gorgeous. So I'm gonna get a little bit wetter and put a little bit more color in it. You don't have to worry about if you get water in the tip because these are water-based and that will just you know come out. See, there you go. But you can keep putting more pigment down. Sorry about the squeakiness. And then picking it up with the doily. Now, what I recommend is if you're getting your doily really wet, you might want to squeeze it out and, and make sure that it's not going to be super saturated for your paper because, of course, when you get paper wet, it either buckles or does something crazy. So here we've got this. What you do is you just... Yeah, that didn't work very well. I'm going to use this one. This is my Dilusions. Actually, you know what? 
I'm not. I'm going to use this this uh, watercolor paint first because watercolor pigment is really, really bright generally, especially when it comes out of the tube. This is cobalt blue. This is my favorite color. But um, you get it get it all wet. Now, see, now I'm already knocking crap over. Um, get it all wet. Mix it all up just like you're going to paint. Of course, you do that with your fingers, though. Not a brush. You don't need a brush. And I'm going to See, it, it's, the ink is leaching out onto the paper, and it's making a pattern. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on as well. Now, my, my doily is really soaking up the, the ink, which is fine with me, because that will give me a more even dye on the doily. But, again, I highly recommend move these markers here. Reing it out. See, look at all that that came out. <laughs> look at the mess I'm making. Okay? And then you have your little pattern. Make it, you know, look like you want it to look. You put it on your paper and you stamp. Now you can get, you can get bold, bright stamps if you have, like, a lot of pigment and not so much water. Or you can get the shadowy ones. You can get you know, kind of watercolory ones where they don't have a lot of definition to them. So you got that. And if you want, you can always add more pigment. Less water and more pigment makes for brighter colors. It also makes for uh, less of a liquidy, um, less liquid in your color, which means you're going to get brighter color as well. So I'm going to kind of wring that out a little bit. And I'm going to put it back on my paper, stamping, and ta-da! And you can do this as many times as, as you feel like y you can. I mean, there's no rules. And I like to do it like this, or you can just fold your paper over, and you can get two patterns, one on, one on both sides. See what I mean? You can see what I mean. Okay, I'm gonna wipe my hands off on this. This cloth has seen so many days of coffee dyeing. It's it's like really incredible. Now yeah, let's see here. We've got this music paper. No, well, all paper is going to take the dye differently. You can use a brayer. You can use a rolling pen to squish it between two pieces of paper. You can use, um, you can set it between a couple of, you know, put your paper on top of your two pieces of paper together with the doily in between and then put books on top of it and let it squish that, you know, overnight or whatever until it dries up. It doesn't matter. You can do this pretty much any way you want. But no matter what you do, you can use that piece of paper in a variety of ways. And you guys, crafters, you are probably your brains are already going like, oh my god, this is, I can, I got so many ways I can use that. So, but look at the end result on the doily. Um, nice bright color. We still have a little bit of a flush of, of the um, purple over here. It's really cool. Really, really cool. So now that was my white doily, and now it's bright blue. And it does kind of change. The color does kind of change as it's drying. Let me grab one over here that I did before. If I can find it. Yeah, wouldn't you know, it's buried. Hold on, let me take my gloves off. There it is. There she is. So this one is dry, but look at that wonderful um, gradient of color in there. And I don't know if this is coming across on the camera as it is as much as I see it in, in person, but there's a lot of darker color around the edges. And then in the center, there's more. I, I added yellow and green together because I wanted a, a yellow green. I didn't want just basic green. So, and it kind of did, it, it did exactly what I wanted it to do. Now, if I wanted to go in and add a little bit of other color, I can always, you know, darken it up by adding blue or whatever. So that one's cool. Um, 
I'm just gonna throw this glove away and get a new one. I am not gonna try to, sh to uh, turn that inside out. That would just not work. Or I'm not because, well, my gloves are way over there. One second, I'm gonna go get a new glove. So what I got recently was these Dilutions ink sprays. And I thought I'd try one of those today because I have never used them before. And we'll see how that dies on paper as well as doily. I'll put this glove on and we'll move this plate somewhere else where it won't fall over, which is cool that I have that. So here's my paper, my music sheet. It's a vintage music sheet, but you can see how the, the little images are, are just, they're pretty well divine, defined. So we've got that. Okay, so I'm going to use this one because, well, let's see, let's use this one. It's a little bit better. It's more defined. I'm going to move that. So, and this is a water-based ink. So what I can do is I can spray it and then, oh, that's so cool. And then I can dilute it a little bit with the water, which is, they're designed to do something like that. So I'm going to, oh, look at that. Look at that. Now I'm just going to spray it. Oh, check that out, dudes. Is that not super gorgeous? And the doily, because it's cotton, it's it's just soaking it right up. But see, I've got a different pattern on the other side. Isn't that cool? Now, if I get it wet enough, I can use it as a stamp. And I can put it on whatever kind of paper I need to. So I'm going to get this is a book page from a dictionary, an old dictionary. So it's kind of like a flyleaf page. So let's see what we can do here. Let's see how that looks. And we just kind of want to roll it, squish it. Oh, now that's beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So see if you have less ink, less liquid, you've got more um, definition in your in your threads so and yes you know what you you don't have to use this all at once um, you can always go back and I'm gonna just roll my hand there and we've got oh isn't that gorgeous look at that doily stamping so so you can take this and you don't have to just use it once. You can use it many more times than, than one time. In fact, if you use this because it's water-based, I'm assuming and I'm, I'm thinking that because water-based and watercolor ink or watercolor pigments work this way is you can probably reactivate the color in this once it's dry and perhaps we should try that. Let's see if it works may not work because it's been a lot of days nope it's gonna work so I'm gonna set that down and then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm going to just push on it and kind of roll my hand a little wet but it worked see reactivated which is typical with with water-based pigments alcohol-based pigments will not reactivate they they um, once they're done, they're done. And ink, like, uh, ink, Derwent Ink Tints pencils? Oh, come on, man. Oops, sorry about that. I'm trying to turn my light down here so you guys can see better. Derwent Ink Tints ink pen colored pencils do not reactivate either. So just to keep that in mind, you can get water color colored pencils and use them in this way. You can, you can probably color right onto your fabric onto your doily and um, then spray it and you have more control over where the color goes and then you can use it that way. But 
and once it dries, you can more than likely, if you don't rinse out the excess color, you can reactivate it just like we did with the green one. So look at that, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm just gonna try and see how far I can go with this. Oh, that is so nice. It's got, you can see where every little thread went. Look at that. Now, what's great about this is if you have a piece of um, uh, scrapbook paper that you don't particularly like, guess what? You can pretty it up with this. In fact, I've got my stash right here. Let me see. I know I have a couple pieces in here that I don't particularly like. This one will do. Well, that's not the one that I was aiming for, but <laughs> that's okay. So it's pink. I don't really like pink very much, but if I put this on top of it, kind of squish it. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And because the paper is a different color, all right, come on now, focus for me. Because the paper is a different color, it's going to, to tint the ink a different color, slightly. So there's another idea. And then let's see. And the, um, this kind of paper, you don't have to be so quiet, Mark. Yeah. This kind of paper, because it's, it's, um, it's sturdy paper, it's not heavy like cardstock, but it is sturdy. Because it's so sturdy, it's taking the ink really well and it's not buckling hardly at all. But then again, too, I don't have a lot of fluid on my doily. So there you go. There's that one. Let's try this little bitty one. Let's move this paper. Okay, so let's move that off to the side because I don't really want to. Look at that. I like that. One side is turquoise and the other side is pretty much white or off-white. But I'm going to ruin that idea right now. <laughs> Soaking this up. And I'm going to just do multiple little... It's not very wet, so it's not it's not getting a lot of um, pattern to it. But you can see it's got kind of like a ghost pattern, which is really great, especially if you're working with a background paper you're going to use for collage, because you don't want sometimes you don't want a really highly well defined design on your collage papers. So if you've got if you if you're just I mean you know a lot of us are still grounded. I'm still grounded because of my doctor's orders, but. Um, I'm not going to be going anywhere for a little bit. And um, this is a great way to use stuff that I already have to um, just, I mean, entertain myself too. Think about that. <laughs> what? You have the dog. Right oh, here. You, I need, you know what? And the second yeah, I that. took it, okay. That. The second I took it, I was like, I bet Mark's going to want that. <laughs> so there we have a multiple stamping with the, um, the focal point in the middle and that would make like a great pocket it can make a great flip corner tuck thing you know all of that and then this one you can use I mean you can use it you can tack it to a page you can use it for the base of a, of a doily flower and wow what a great color for a doily flower isn't that and then you know layer 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 like this and then where's my other one and then you've got a neat little doily flower and then you can put your flat back pearl in the middle or some other kind of little blingy thing and and just use it like that but you can control what color you have by what color you're putting on it and the possibilities are, are totally endless so you guys try it out post it if you post it on instagram tag me on instagram so i can share it so other people can see what you're doing because now, I'm not the only one interested in new ideas. I am totally interested in new ideas, but there's a lot of people that are like burning out, you know, they're bored because they're, they've been at home for three, four or five weeks, who knows? And, and something like this, seeing other people use it and putting their own spin on it is really, really good for morale, really good for morale. So I encourage you, I am S underscore Joe Beth underscore Sexton on Instagram. 
and you can tag me there. You can send me a message on my Etsy store with a picture, uh, or you can go to my, our Facebook page for this channel, for the Crafty Cauldron channel, and post it there if you're a member. If you're not, hey, join, because I don't even think I have any questions for you to answer. I just want people to go there, have fun. We have few filters, but we do demand respect of each other. So, I mean, it's just, that's the way that, that it is. I'm just gonna keep working with this for a little bit because it's really fun and cool. And I've got so many colors. I have pastels, I have gouache, I have acrylic colors, which are sort of like watercolors. And then I've got inks and um, paints. In fact, you can use paint that isn't water-based on this if you're just interested in picking it up and stamping with it. You can just use that and then rinse the paint out later with soap and water. So um, be, before it dries, because once it dries, of course, it's going to get hard. But I recommend, I highly recommend, highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's easy. It doesn't make too much of them. If I can do this without destroying my work table, you guys can do it. I'm, I'm telling you. So thank you for watching. This was super fun. Um, I encourage you to try it. Um, uh, even if you don't have dilution spray inks, you can make your own inks. Um, Tina Williams at Rehatch Designs has a really cool video about how you can use old Sharpie and marker pens and make your own colors in little spray bottles. So I'm going to put her link down below too. You guys check her out. Her videos are awesome. She makes journals too. So I will see you later. You guys, I'm taking my gloves off for the sign off because you can't do that with gloves on. Peace, love, and remember it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Make it a happy, crafty, and colorful one. And remember you guys, take care. Love you guys. I'll see you later. Bye. Have fun.